So, should you buy the Atticus writing app? Hello, I'm Michael with Writer Sanctuary, and today we're going to be talking about Atticus, the writing app, not the mental health app. Yeah, that's a long story. Anyway, if you don't know, I'm always at the lookout for new writing apps that bring new functionality to publishing authors. Now, these are apps that are specifically tailored for authors and not just basic word processors like Word or Evernote. There's nothing wrong with those, but I just kind of like the aspect of being specifically designed for authors. Anyway, Atticus is one such app, and I was able to spend the $147 to buy into it, considering how it doesn't have a free version or a free trial. Of course, I can always send in the 30-day money-back guarantee, but... So let's jump into it. Atticus is a browser-based app, which means it runs off of your primary web browser. In this case, I'm using Google Chrome. This is a lot different from other apps such as Scrivener, which is an actual installable program. And Atticus is essentially just an extension of your browser. Now, first of all, with Atticus, the reason why mine is dark is because I'm using dark mode, which is a Google Chrome extension. And uh, you can enable and disable that just like that. So that's what it looks like by default. But, you know, I kind of like having dark mode. So, that's one of the benefits of having a browser-based app is that anything you have installed on your browser, such as Chrome or Firefox or whatever, will work in Atticus. So that means things like dark mode or even Grammarly's uh, Chrome extension will scan through your writing. Now, the first thing I wanted to point out is setting up goals because I'm a big fan of goals and writing habits. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on any part of our body. So I'm going to start with the first chapter. And then up here, we got our more tools. Here we can set our book goals and the writing habits. This is kind of set up similar to Reedsy's goals, but um, the writing habits kind of track how well you do throughout the entire month. So that's a little bit extra there, but you can set up goals just as easy. And uh, I like goals. For one thing, goals can help you keep motivated to write. I know it does for me anyway. Another aspect I'd like to point out is the sprint timer. Now you can set this timer to anything you want. You can also set breaks and then you can start the timer. And when you start it, it'll start counting down the clock of how long you want your timer to be. Now with a sprint timer, it just essentially counts down the clock if you want to do writing sprints. And I know a lot of authors out there like doing that. Technically, that's kind of what, what I do throughout the day because I assign specific blocks of time for nothing but my book. So that way I can set the timer if I want for two hours and that way I can guarantee myself two hours. And once the timer reaches zero on the sprint, it'll pop up with a blue message that is kind of obvious, just like that. And uh, it, it's it, you can see it no matter where you are in your story because it's all on the sticky top. So if you want to start another sprint, you can just click on the green button or you just hit no and be done. Now, the one thing that I don't like about Atticus is its wraparound text. As you can see, the entire writing is not uh, formatted correctly, so it just wraps around. And for a mobile reader, it's really easy to come up with a wall of text that is people can get lost in, which is why you don't do a wall of text on a website. Now, I know reading a book is a little bit different, but I just wish it was a little bit more formatted as you type, like Reedsy and Scrivener. However, Atticus will properly format and preview the text for you. Um, it takes a little bit getting used to because of how the system works, but once you do, it's really easy to follow through. For example, let's say that I wanted to format uh, the first chapter of this story, which is um, available on Inkit, by the way. If we click on formatting, we can see how the um, preview on the right hand screen here, and as you can see, it indents, it'll add the space, and it'll properly indent all of your conversations you have throughout the story. Now by default, you have seven different layouts here. Um, personally, I like the Delphini, uh, but you know, you can choose whatever you like and it'll adjust the chapter accordingly. But perhaps one of the more ideal aspects of using Atticus is it adds the print preview. Unfortunately, not every app has a print preview, which is kind of a pain if you want to do printed books, especially if you're trying to get it up on Amazon. That's a whole nother convoluted process, but I had to upload my book four times just to get it semi-right. 
and there were still parts of it that didn't really jive well with me. Still, it's up. But one of the cooler aspects of it is that you have quite a few different options here for your um, layout, or you can create a whole new one. Now, when you click on create a new theme, it's there, you just have to scroll down to it. I wish they would have made it a little bit more obvious, but each their own, I guess. From here, you can change your chapter settings, you can change your chapter title, you got your fonts, your alignment, so like you can center your chapter titles. And then the preview will show it. Then you have your paragraph settings, you can use drop caps, you can start at the beginning of the chapter or every paragraph below when you use the first sentence formatting. Scene breaks, you can add different types of scene breaks to it. Ooh, I kind of like some of these are really nice. Or you can click on my image gallery and upload your own. You can add a custom image to it. You can create an image with book brush, but that's another premium service that I don't have, so I'm not going to care about. And you have your notes settings, so you can add footnotes. Your print settings are quite elaborate, so you can change your body format, the large print, header and footer settings. Then you have your paper trim size, so things that are um, things that work with Kindle Direct Publishing and Ingram Spark. So we can change everything from a five by eight all the way up to an eight and a half by 11. And out of all of the different apps that I've used, that's probably one of the more elaborate platforms for print settings. Now you can change it in KDP, but it is such a pain to get everything right. Of course, you'll need to do the cover yourself and that's a whole different video altogether. And then you have advanced settings down here where you can change the, uh, the alignment, your margins, the font sizes, the line spacing. So it's pretty detailed on what you can do with your new theme. And once uh, you have everything set the way you like, just hit the save as new theme and you're good to go. Now Atticus exports as PDF, EPUB, and DOCX formats, which pretty much cover your bases for all the more popular ebook and print services out there. Now that part of it is a little bit lacking compared to apps like Scrivener, which has a huge amount of different file types you can export as. But you know, EPUBs, DOCX, and PDFs are pretty much universal, so that's not too bad. Something else I'd like to point out about Atticus is that it is pretty easy to use and learn. There's a few functions that are here and there that I had to kind of dig for, but um, I eventually found them. For example, when I wanted to add back matter, that is in these three dots here, so you have your front and back matter. So you can just go through and find preset layouts, which has your blurbs, dedication, epigraph, forward, you know, yada, yada, yada copyright templates that you can use, the title page, you can add a new chapter, full page image, you can import chapters from elsewhere. So like if you had a file that you wanted to add to Atticus. Something else I wanted to point out is when you highlight something, let's say we're gonna do a preface. Now when you add a preface to it, if you go to the preface, go back to writing, and yeah, we're gonna leave without saving because I didn't really change much. Atticus will give you a brief description of what each page is for. So like with a preface, is most commonly found in nonfiction books. It's an opportunity for the author to share a personal story, yada, yada, yada. So it's really cool that Atticus adds all of these elements to it, especially if you're not sure how to use a certain page. The only other app that I've come across that does that is Scrivener, and in Scrivener's templates, it will also have a way of how to use that page. So I just thought it was kind of a useful tool, especially for newer authors. So how does Atticus compare with other writing apps? Well, many of the writing features that Atticus has are available in Readsy for free. And I'm not a big fan of the wraparound text like I discussed earlier. It's really easy if you're not paying attention to create one massive block of text. You wanna make sure you get your paragraphs where they need to be. Unlike other platforms that have it already formatted, you can kind of see where everything's lying as you're typing it. With Atticus, you have to go back to the formatting screen to see if it's all looking okay. Now, like I said, Atticus does automatically format the text and the paragraphs and the conversations, which is great. I love that aspect. You just have to keep that in mind while you're writing. But perhaps its most notable feature is the preview and the formatting aspect of it. Now, I'm a bit on the fence on whether Atticus is worth $147, especially when Scrivener is cheaper and it gives you a lot more when it comes to writing elements. For example, with Scrivener, I can do a split screen and have my notes on one side and my typing on the other. I can also organize all of my research on Scrivener and add everything I needed. And Scrivener is like more than half the price. Though Scrivener is far more advanced than Atticus. 
it can get overwhelming with Scriveners simply because there is so much to the tool you can get lost in the weeds. Something else about Readsy is that even though Readsy is free, it doesn't have the elaborate preview and formatting functions that Atticus has, which are probably the best I've ever come around. Now don't get me wrong, Atticus is a great writing tool, but at $147 it's a bit spendy for people who are just starting out. It does have a lot of cool features that I like, and uh, especially with the goals, I'm a big fan of goals, and so being able to track that stuff is really helpful. And it really just comes down to user preference. For some, the formatting capability might be perfect for them. It might be worth the extra money, especially since you can customize nearly every aspect of your book. Now, you don't get that kind of flexibility with anything other than Scrivener. And even then, comparing um, the formatting aspects of Scrivener and, and Atticus, I would say Atticus is much easier to manage. So it's really hard for me to tell which one's my favorite because there are a lot of aspects of Atticus that I really like. And there's a lot of aspects of Scrivener and Readsy that I really like. But I'm going to continue to use Atticus to write um, the story that's on Inkit and possibly um, promote that book off my blog for free. We'll have to see. Now, I could get my money back, the $147 with the 30-day money-back guarantee, but I'm going to see just how far I can push this app. And so far, the only part of it that I really kind of don't like is the wraparound text. I wish it would format while you're typing, but, you know, it works great when it formats it. That's all I really care about. I just got to remember that it does that. So what's your favorite writing app? There's nothing wrong with using Word or LibreOffice to write your book. In fact, that's how I wrote my first book was using LibreOffice. I just like all the extra stuff that um, some of these apps put in for authors. Like, I love being able to track my goals. And so far, Readsy, Scrivener, and Atticus all do that. Except for Readsy and Atticus make it more obvious. You have to dig a bit for uh, to find it in Scrivener. Now, if Atticus had a split screen where I can keep my notes and stuff, that would be perfect. Because I forget a lot. But anywho, if you enjoyed the video, hit the like button for more videos about self-publishing, freelance writing, or blogging. Hit the subscribe button. Don't forget to hit the notification bell. I'm going to get back to working on my book, and I'll see you next time.